Do you guys remember 2014? It was a much simpler time back then, wasn't it? Okay, um, maybe not for that stuff. But for single board computers, it was pretty straightforward. If you wanted a low powered SBC to tinker with and learn some basic programming or get into robotics, you bought yourself a Raspberry Pi B+. And that was that. The Raspberry Pi was the SBC for everyone and their grandma. This was a great thing for years as it lowered the barrier to entry for people young and old to learn a popular new skill. But as the Raspberry Pi became more popular, other companies took note and decided to enter the market. And as we know, competition is great for the consumer and we began seeing some pretty powerful and innovative little boards. Fast forward to today and there are so many options when it comes to SBCs. But if we at the point of market saturation, with all of these SBCs to choose from, there has to be a way for some of them to stand out. That's why I want to take a look at the Mixtile Blade 3 today. This little guy has the same form factor that we know and love from the Raspberry Pi, but with some major differences under the hood. Not all of them good though. Let's talk about it. So when I talk about how the Mixtile Blade 3 compares to the competition, I'll be doing so in two ways how it compares to the Raspberry Pi, and how it compares to, well, everything else. The Blade 3 is an SBC based on the Rockchip RK3588, an eight-core SoC that actually incorporates both a quad-core Cortex-A76 as well as an A55. Along with that, you get a Mali G610 GPU and your choice of four, 16, or 32 gigabytes of RAM. This thing is a little beast and all of that horsepower gives you some pretty extensive transcoding options. We also get a crap ton of IO and expansion, most notably four lanes of PCIe Gen 3 via the U.2 port. For direct IO, when put in the official case, you get dual USB-C, which can be used for power and video out, dual 2.5 RJ45 ports and HDMI 2.1 out port and HDMI in port. Yeah, no USB type A ports, which is kind of lame. So overall, this is a pretty capable little device on paper. You get a good amount of horsepower and a good amount of IO and expansion. I'm gonna put some numbers up here of some benchmarks and how it stacks up to its competitors. You can pause the video and take a look if you want. But this video isn't really about those numbers. Well, not completely, because those only tell one side of the story. Sure, if you buy a computer just for benchmarking, then you'll be happy. But if you're buying a computer to use it, then that's another story. Here is where we start to discuss what makes this thing unique to use. You see that PCI expansion can be used to cluster four of these together using a PCIe switch built into their cluster box. That is freaking cool. This is what I like to see, something different than the zillion Raspberry Pi knockoffs. Unfortunately, Mixtile didn't want to send over a cluster box for me to show off, so all I have is a single Blade 3. Oh, wow, Brett, you couldn't just buy one yourself? I mean, how much could it realistically cost? Yeah. If you went with a cluster box and put four of their mid-tier Blade 3 units in there, you'd be spending $1,800 before taxes and shipping. 1,800 United States Freedom Units. Bro, Remember when we were buying Raspberry Pis for like 35 bucks? Now, obviously these SBCs have gotten more capable, but that's obviously at a cost, literally. So let's say you have $2,000 to spend on a small, low power cluster. Well, in the last few years, we've also seen a similar boom in the mini PC market. These little x86 based PCs have gotten so powerful and so affordable that we are honestly now comparing them to SBCs because it costs the same freaking price. Spoiler alert, those x86 mini PCs will blow these SBCs out of the water in terms of capability. So back to our $2,000, what can we get for that? Well, how about four mini PCs, each with an eight core 16 thread Ryzen mobile chip, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte NVMe. You even get USB type A ports and still keep the dual 2.5 gig networking. I'll even throw in a 2.5 gig switch to cluster them. I know, I know, these are going to use more power, most likely by a factor of three, but I'm confident you'll get more than three times the performance and usability out of them. Speaking of usability, they're x86, so software compatibility will be much better on the mini PCs. This brings me to my next point. 
I think so many SBC manufacturers today are focusing on putting the most capable ARM chips in their devices and adding cool features like PCIe clustering, but they're ignoring software support. At the time of making this video, you have the choice of running Ubuntu, Debian, or Armbian on this device. And that's their own version, so you may not get all of the recent updates and software support that you'd expect. I've even seen Android mentioned on their sites, but there is no timetable of when or if that'll actually be supported. So sure, you can have a capable SoC with plenty of IO and cool features, but if the software support is ass, then who gives a shit? I tried out the included Ubuntu install, and I mean, it was fine. Like as a desktop for watching YouTube and doing office tasks, it's very capable and a huge leap from the Raspberry Pi, if I'm being honest. I even installed Docker and spun up some services. Given that we have dedicated transcoders in here, I tried Plex, but Plex doesn't support hardware transcoding on these chips. However, Jellyfin does support it as of version 10.9. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it working. The new Docker image is 10.9, but I think it's a version behind on the Jellyfin FFmpeg because that option wasn't there. I tried downloading directly from their dev packages, but that had a different issue. Hardware transcoding just didn't work at all. I even tried just playing the file directly in VLC and didn't like that either. Chalk it up to super highly capable hardware with software that's just too far behind. And if you're looking to use this thing as a desktop to get actual work done, you're just not gonna be able to. As a content creator, none of my software will even run on here. Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, OBS, nope. Gaming, hell no. But Brett, it's an SBC, nobody is using this as a desktop. Bro, this is a $370 computer and they even market it that way. Yes, I agree that buying an SBC to run as a desktop is stupid and if you're buying this, then you're most likely looking to run it as a headless system to serve a purpose in your home lab, but come on. Now I'm at a crossroads. On one hand, I'm excited that these ARM SBC devices are getting more powerful and even powerful enough to run some real workloads, but on the other hand, they're getting so expensive and the software just isn't keeping up with the hardware development. Like I mentioned before, you can snag an x86 system that will do everything this SBC will do, but much better and for honestly cheaper. I do like the idea of a super compact ARM cluster possibly crammed into a 1U rack mount, but I've only ever seen that from one guy on Twitter and he did a small batch sale of them on Kickstarter and it still wasn't cheap. Until we can get something like that mass produced and cheaper, I just don't see the benefit of going with the ARM SBC route right now. Don't get me wrong, I don't think the Blade 3 is a bad device at all. I'm positive in the right scenario, it's amazing. They definitely crammed a lot of features and IO into here. So for those of you out there, that's cool, but for the general user, it just doesn't make sense right now. Do you agree? Let me know down in the comments what you think. So overall thoughts, this wasn't necessarily a review of the Blade 3, more so of where the ARM SBC market is headed. I mean, I used to be a huge fan of these ARM SBCs and have tried a lot of them, most of them still sitting there over on my shelf. But with where the trajectory of these are going, I think I'll be hopping off of that hype train. I just feel like the entire market has gone from being this cheap, affordable way to learn on a little ARM system to how powerful can we make an ARM system and you know figure out the software yourself. For some people, you may like that. You may really like tinkering with these things, but I'd rather just buy it and then have it working. But that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, then drop a like. If you like content like this, then go ahead and subscribe. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my ARM-based SBC with excellent software support. You guys are amazing. And if you're still watching, you're 2014. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.